Nurse Maisie sighed in frustration. Where in the world are you, Jessica? Jessica was in total darkness. Her surroundings were completely quiet except for her breath. There was a coldness that penetrated her skin, straight to her bones, and she shivered. She touched her bare arms, then and then her clothes. She felt the material of her prom dress. Why am I wearing my prom dress? She wondered. Where was she? She put her hands out in front of her, trying to feel her way forward, but she saw nothing in front of her and nothing behind her. Fear crashed over her. She was nowhere. Had she died in her sleep? Was this what the afterlife was like? Was she in some kind of in-between world? But she couldn't have died, she realised. It wasn't yet her time. She still had to go to the prom, she still had to help April. She felt the dependent and gripped the metal that always felt warm to the touch. It was still around her neck. She started to walk around with slow, hesitant steps. She didn't know how long she walked, it seemed like forever. Out of nowhere, she finally heard a creak. A footstep? A movement? Hello? She whispered. Is someone there? Please. If you're there, pl say something. I'm afraid. I can't see anything. Please. I don't know what to do. No answer. She licked her dry lips as she continued to move forward, trying to get somewhere. Anywhere. Was there a wall? A door, maybe. Another sound came from around her. Metal creaking against metal. Jessica froze as awareness dawned. No. The sound happened again, but this time right behind her. A shudder of terror radiated down her spine. Jessica ran. She rushed, to she rushed forward as fast as she could, with her arms waving around her, wondering if she would collide with something. Metal footsteps stomped behind her. Quickly. Too quickly. So close. So close. She blinked, trying to adjust to the dark, but she still could not see anything. In the cold, a sweat broke out on her body as she ran, trying to escape the terrifying things that chased her. A tense grip curled around her arm. Jessica screamed. No, please, get away from me. Someone help me. Quickly, the grip tore off her arm from her shoulder. Oh my gosh, that's gruesome. She felt the warm gush of blood rush down the side of her body. Her body vibrated in shock. Her mouth opened, gasping for air. Then she felt a grip on her other arm. Jessica tried to yank away when she felt her arm pulled from her bone. Jessica fell down in pain and agony, and it seemed like it took forever to collide with the hard, cold ground. She heard more creaks and movements of metal around her, above her, sorry, and then she felt something cold grab the pendant on her neck before it was torn away from her. No, don't take my pendant away. Jessica jerked awake with a frightening scream. She was in her sleeping bag on the stone floor in the mausoleum. She pushed against the stone bench at her back and grabbed her mini flashlight, flicking it on. Her heart felt like it would pound through her skin. She swiveled the light around, looking for anything in the night. She listened for sounds of metal creaking against metal, but she could only hear her breaths filtering out of her mouth and crickets chirping in the night. <clears throat> she saw nothing around her but stone walls. She was truly alone. She touched the pendant against her chest as she calmed down. She was safe. Everything's okay, she said aloud, and waited for dawn. When the soft rays of light peered through the coloured glass window, Jessica looked around her dark and stale surroundings. Since staying in the mausoleum, for the first time she saw it for what it really was, a cold, dark place for the dead, not for someone alive, not for someone who wanted to live. The next day, during science and engineering class, it was time to present the Minibot 5000 to Mrs Willoughby in the class. Jessica sat next to Robert at their lab table. The Minibot 5000 was sitting on the table between them. They'd painted some of the parts Robert's favourite colour blue. Jessica held the final written report in her hands to be turned in with the presentation. She felt nervous, which was odd for her. She noticed Robert bouncing his leg up and down. He seemed nervous too. They tested out the Minibot 5000 a few more times and everything had generally worked, but as they learned throughout the project, anything could go wrong at any time. During their other test runs, the Minibot 5000 had burned out a wire, which had to be replaced, springs had broken and needed to be fixed, and now the final presentation was here, for better or for worse. Jessica wanted Robert to feel better. She took something out of her book bag and held it in her hand while they listened to the other students' presentation. When the class clapped, she poked Robert in the shoulder. He glanced at her. Here, she said, and opened her palm. It was her lucky rabbit's foot. He lifted his eyebrows. A rabbit's foot? It's for luck. 
I know we'll do well, but it might take it might make you feel better to have a little extra luck on your side. He smiled as he took the rabbit's foot. That's cool. Thanks, Jess. He dangled the short chain that was attached to that he, it was attached to on his finger as she had done many times before. Jessica smiled back. You're welcome. I have something for you too. He loosened the braided leather band on his wrist and handed it to her. I'd like for you to have this. She shook her head. But it's yours. You always wear it. Now I'd like you to have it. Jessica looked. Uh, Jessica took the bracelet and slipped it on her wrist and tightened the band till it fit. She felt a funny warmth in her chest. Thank you, she said quietly. Can't wait for tonight. Prom's going to be fun. Jessica felt a nervous flutter in her stomach as she thought of prom. Robert and Jessica, you're next. You're there. You're next. You're next. Sans. Uh, Robert stood, sliding the rabbit's foot in his pocket. Look, it's Ken and Zombie Barbie. I want to say that better. Hang on. <clears throat> Look, it's Ken and Zombie Barbie, the girl behind them said, and a few laughs followed. Robert ignored them, and Jessica smiled that he didn't let him that let them get under his skin. Um. Oh right, yeah. He lifted the Minibot Five Thousand, and they made their cla their way to the front of the class. It took fifteen minutes to discuss their entire plan for Minibot Five Thousand. The design, the components, the building of the bot, and the trials and tribulations that followed with the, with the test runs. And now let's see Minibot 5000 in action, Robert announced. Surprisingly, Robert handed the controller to Jessica to perform the Minibot 5000 presentation to the class. Then, all eyes would be on her alone. She nearly didn't take it. She was used to being invisible, to being looked over and forgotten. Robert gave her a reassuring smile. You can do it, he whispered. With a trembling hand, she took she took the controller. She flicked on a switch on the Minibot 5000 and then the remote. Robert grabbed the soda can and went to the other end of the presentation floor. She pushed the knob to move the bot forward toward Robert. Minibot 5000 sputtered at first as usual, then moved toward him. She stopped it right at his feet, then flicked the button so that the tray elevated. Robert placed the can on the tray and Jessica flicked the button so that the tray went back down. The can wobbled but stayed upright. She then backed it up and turned the Minibot 5000 around. She guided it to Mrs. Willoughby and raised the tray for her teacher to grab the soda. Well, thank you, Minibot 5000. I don't mind if I do, Mrs. Willoughby said. She lifted the soda, cracked open the tab and took a sip. Yummy, the students laughed. A successful Minibot, you two. Great job. She praised their work as the class clapped along. Robert smiled, and even though all eyes were on Jessica, she didn't care. She smiled back at him. As they sat back in their seats, a girl came up to Jessica and Robert's table. Jessica automatically ducked her head, her hair sliding against her face. Hi, the girl said to Jessica. I'm Tina. Jessica lifted her head and blinked in, and blinked in surprise. Oh, hi. The girl had brown hair pulled back into a ponytail. She wore a black sweatshirt and faded jeans. Jessica noticed her in class a few times. She kept to herself and was often studying alone. Your bot is really cool, Tina said. Thank you. Um, I liked yours too. The moving arm, right? Yeah, thanks. I paired up with Blake. He's okay. Maybe next time we can work together. Jessica glanced toward uh, Robert, but he was talking to another student. Yeah, maybe we can, she said. Okay, see you around, Jessica. Okay, bye. Tina. Jessica couldn't believe it. Another student actually wanted to speak with her and possibly work with her on a project in the future. She was used to kids avoiding her and now another student wanted to be around her. She swallowed, trying to wrap her mind around how quickly things were changing. If only it was that easy. And she was afraid she was starting to like the changes. Oh no. After school, Jessica walked by April's hospital room. The girl was asleep. Prom was soon, but she'd wanted to come in and see how April was doing. Maybe talk to F Father Jeremiah again. She passed by the nurse's station, where she overheard Na Nurse Macy talking to Colin, the nervous nursing assistant. April has a very high fever, and we've tried different antibiotics to bring it down. For some reason, nothing's working, Nurse Macy said, clearly frustrated. That sucks, Colin said. She's a sweet girl, 
talks with me and asks me so many questions just about my life. Darn it, I feel helpless when the medicines that are supposed to work don't help at all. It's frustrating. I want to help these children, not just comfort them. Jessica gripped the pendant and wondered if she was doing the right thing by going to prom instead of helping April. Seeing April lying in bed, pale and fragile, when she had the chance to make her better, seemed so wrong. She had to be perfectly sure she was making the right choice. Oh, Jessica, Nurse Macy said when she noticed her. Jessica stepped forward. Yes? I wanted to talk to you about something important. Jessica blinked. Um, okay. It's prom night, right? Jessica nodded. I want you to have lots of fun. F uh, fun? Fun. Nurse Macy's face blushed. Um, and well, I, I tried to go by your home last night to check in on you, but there's an error on your home address you have listed with the hospital. Is it an old address? Jessica's, uh, Jessica blinked rapidly. Oh no. Suddenly an alert went off in, Jess in April's room. Nurse Macy jerked her attention away. Call the doctor, she shouted to Carlin. Carlin, Carlin, uh, as she rushed to April's room with two other nurses. Jessica watched in dismay as Nurse Macy checked the, med the machines connected to April. She demanded something of the other nurses, and Jessica watched them put a vial of medicine into April's IV. Soon, April's alert turned off. Jessica felt a pressure in her chest. Taking a breath, she hurried to the chapel to see Father Jeremiah. April was not doing well. The prom was tonight. Her dream was still heavy on her mind. What did it all mean? Was she making the wrong choice? Was she being too selfish? Was she avoiding her destiny? Everything was too much. The pressure to help others. The uncertainty of what to do. She just couldn't handle it. When she got to the chapel, Father Jeremiah was speaking to a man who was crying. Father Jeremiah was whispering to him with a hand on his shoulder. Jessica walked to the first pew and sat down. She took off her pendant and held it in her hands. Please help me understand if I am doing the right thing. I've made the wrong choices before. Could you send me a sign, please, to show me what I need to do? I feel like I just can't do this anymore. Please, I need guidance. But no sign came to her. No answer popped into her head. Jessica felt so alone. It was the same feeling she had felt when she knew she had changed forever. She had vowed to herself she would never feel this way again. But it was like she was back to where she had started. Jessica needed to get ready for prom, but she had another important question to ask Father Jeremiah. She glanced at him and saw that he was still talking with the grieving man. She wanted to know if there really was an afterlife. It didn't look like she would ever get her answer now. She left the chapel and hoped she was doing the right thing by giving herself some of her life back. Prom night had arrived. Whoop whoop! Jessica's stomach was in knots as she walked into the prom with Robert by her side. Music seemed to bounce off the walls. Kids were chatting and laughing, dressed in pretty dresses and dark tuxedos. The dance floor looked full and there were still more kids seated at tables. There was a corner set up to take pictures and long tables lined with snacks and drinks. Chaperones were off to the side, watching the kids dance. Robert had given her a corsage, a pretty white rose with baby's breath, tied with a purple ribbon. Luckily, Nurse Macy had told her about the whole boutonniere thing. I don't know what that is. Or she wouldn't have had one for him. Hang on a second. <coughs> oh. God. That was nice. Uh, some of the kids who made fun of her stared at her, and Jessica hesitated. They likely hadn't expected Zombie Girl to go to the prom, let alone have a date. They were probably waiting for her to do something crazy like attack them with vampire fangs or something. No, she wouldn't break out in fangs, but she might just fall on her face. Between getting little sleep, doing all the work for the presentation, and the excitement of getting ready for prom, Jessica was exhausted. She'd gotten ready at the mausoleum instead of the hospital like she'd planned, afraid to run into Nurse Macy again and have to answer questions about where she lived. Jessica had no idea what she would tell the woman. She never really had to lie about her life because usually people stayed away from her. In a candlelight with a small hand mirror, she had to put extra layers of makeup on her face to cover her shallow skin and the dark circles under her eyes. She'd put on some tinted eyeshadow and she left her long hair down. Her nerves were practically shot, but she was determined to enjoy every minute of this prom experience. 
Deep within, she felt this could be her last chance to experience something very special. You look ve- Let me start that again. You look really pretty, Jess, Robert told her. She glanced at him and smiled as they walked further into the room. Thank you. You look really nice too. He wore a nicely fitted black tux with a light purple vest. The white rose boutonniere was pinned to his suit jacket. Want to dance first or get something to drink? Robert asked. Jessica looked around, wondering what to do first. She wanted to soak up every part of the experience. Let's dance first. All right. Robert led her to the dance floor. They squished in between couples as a slow beat began to play through the speakers. Robert put his hands around her waist, and she put her hands on his strong shoulders. He smelled of a faint cologne that he must have worn just for the dance. She realised things had changed for her the moment she met Robert. Over the last few weeks, he had slowly gotten close to her and helped her open up to him and to some of the experiences she never thought she would have again, such as making friends, being more present in her life, even something as simple as indulging in her favourite dessert. She'd thought the only way to fulfil her purpose was to keep her distance from others. She thought she'd deserve to be alone for her past mistakes. But no matter how she tried to stay away from others, it hadn't worked. She'd gotten to know Nurse Macy, Robert, and now she was even making new friends like Tina. And here she was, actually at prom. She couldn't believe this was happening. Something good. Something special. For her. Maybe even though she had made mistakes in the past, she could be forgiven and be deserving of more in life. Maybe Father Jeremiah was right about being open to receiving happiness and even love. Jessica and Robert swayed back and forth to the slow music. It was beautiful, really, even being packed in with so many kids. She could feel herself start to sweat from all the heat surrounding her. It didn't matter though. This was a night she would always remember, so she could replay this night over and over and over in her mind as many times as she wanted. Jessica? Jessica looked up into Robert's eyes. It was like time stood still. He leaned down to her ear to speak over the loud music. Jessica, I want you to know that I really like you. Getting to know you these past few weeks has been special. When I moved here, I thought it would be the same boring experience at my other school. But when I met you, you were different. You made me feel different. He leaned back and smiled at her. She leaned toward his ear. I like you too, Robert. You've helped me come out of my shell a little more. I was used to keeping it to myself. I don't have a lot of friends, but you've been a good friend to me. He smiled as she leaned back. I'm glad I could help, and I'm happy you came to prom with me. Me too. A moment passed as they looked at each other. Then Robert leaned down toward her. He was going to kiss her. Oh my, she had never kissed a boy before. Her stomach fluttered. She felt sweat drip down from the side of her face. Robert's cheek glided against the dampness on her face. She felt his lips brush against hers. Robert staggered back. What is that? He brushed his hand across his face and Jessica froze. There was a dark grease on Robert's face. On his lips, she stood frozen in horror. Grease that was old, slick and dirty. And it was from her. Oh no, no, no. Something inside her cracked, as if she had been carrying within her this delicate cup of hope and dreams and happiness. And now the cup broke, spilling out all that she ever wanted. I, I'm sorry, she gushed out, frantic. Let me help. She reached out to Robert, trying to help him. He jerked away. Ugh, filthy, he spat out. He swiped at his mouth, spit on the floor. Filthy. Jessica stepped back and knocked into someone. Watch it, a girl snapped, then looked at her, and her eyes widened. Oh my gosh, this was it, she thought. This was the sign she'd been waiting for. Kids stopped dancing to stare at her. Some pointed at her. Others made faces of disgust. The girls from science class were laughing at her. She'd made the wrong choice again. She shouldn't have come. A wave of heavy darkness engulfed her. Sounds faded in and out of her ears. Robert, the dance, the students, the decorations. Everything drifted away as if it never existed. And that was how it was supposed to be. This world wasn't for her. It was for someone else who deserved it. She could feel herself turning, running, as tears streamed down her face. The blaring music, 
disappeared. The cold night surrounded her, and all she could do was run. Run far, far away. Nurse Macy was going over her patient charts at the nurse's station. She was worried about April's health. She was afraid there was no hope for the young girl. Mixed in with her worry about her patient was her worry about Jessica. She hadn't gotten a chance to talk further about the girl's address, but she wasn't going to let it go. When Jessica returned to work tomorrow, she'd sit her down and really ask about her family. No more excuses. She just hoped Jessica was having the time of her life at prom. Colin walked up to her. April is not improving, her pulse is thready, her vitals are weak, fever is still high. Nurse Macy sighed. I know. She's the only one who hasn't made any improvement. It's not good. I just called Father Jeremiah to come and say some prayers on her behalf. Couldn't hurt. I'm open to any miracle for that young girl. I'll update her doctor right away. Suddenly, the hospital door swung open with a loud commotion. Nurse Macy and Colin turned their heads toward the door. Colin sucked in air. What the heck? Jessica? <laughs> Nurse Macy called out in confusion. Jessica looked terrible. Her face was pale. Brownish liquid streaked down her face from her forehead, eyes and nose. The liquid had dripped down her neck onto her beautiful dress, which they had bought not too long ago. Jessica looked wild, crazed. Nurse Macy stepped forward to ask her what had happened, but stopped in shock as Jessica ran past her. A few nuts and bolts littered behind her, scattering. They were followed by an old wrench and a rusty bike pedal that fell to the floor. Nurse Macy's eyes widened as Jessica ran into April's room. We need security, Colin said from behind Nurse Macy. Then Jessica slammed the door shut. Nurse Macy and Colin scrambled toward the door. It's jammed, Colin spat out, struggling to turn the handle. Nurse Macy hit the door with her palm. Jessica, open the door. Talk to me, please. Through the glass of the hospital room, she watched Jessica pull the necklace from over her head. It was the pendant she'd always seen her wear. Then she somehow had a knife. Jessica! Jessica began to whittle away at the charm above April's bed. Hurry! Get this door open! Nurse Macy called out to Colin and to a security guard that had run over to help. I am, but she blocked the door with something, the security guard said. Nurse Macy pounded on the ga glass. Jessica, please! Open the door! I need to see April! Whatever happened, it's going to be okay. I can help you. What's going on? Nurse Macy turned to see Father Jeremiah. It's Jessica. She locked herself in April's room. We can't get in. Maybe I can help. Just then, the security guard and Colin were able to push the door open, sliding whatever was blocking the door. Thank goodness. Nurse Macy rushed in. She spotted April was asleep in the bed. But where was Jessica? Oh, gross, Colin said, pointing to the floor. How did all that get in here? There on the floor beside April's bed, was a pile of metal pieces, steel bars, gears, bolts, and junkyard garbage. Smelly grease dripped from the pile, as if it were blood. What is going on here? Nurse Macy whispered. Could she have gone out the window? Colin asked. He looked out the window, but found it locked. The security guard checked the restroom. Nurse Macy shook her head, bewildered, as she turned toward the door. Father Jeremiah! Jessica's gone. Just vanished. I don't understand. She was... she was just here. Father Jeremiah stepped into the room. He looked down at the pile of metal with a quiet sadness as if he understood something no one else could. Then he made the sign of the cross and began to pray. In that moment, Nurse Macy heard April's heart monitor level out... oh sorry... And Nurse Macy heard April's heart monitor level out into a strong, healthy rhythm. I love it so much. Such a good story. Oh my god. That was so good. That was so good. That is easily, like, honestly, just easily my favourite story ever. It's so good. It's so, so well put together. Um, one of my favourite scenes, if you couldn't tell, like, by the way I was voice acting it, was the prom scene. Love that scene so much. Just, like, they are so, like, sentimental to each other. Jessica's, like, letting herself go. And then all of a sudden, it, it everything just changed. The entire world just changed. It's kind of like that one time in Into the Pit, 
when Oswald was like going in the ball pit, to, expecting to like meet his friends again, but just went in the ball pit and uh, came out to hear screams and stuff. Like it was that sort of moment. I love this story so much. Uh, I am going to be making a theory video on this and like a whole explained video so that I can explain it in more detail if you didn't completely understand everything that was happening here. Um, but I'll do a kind of like a quick kind of explanation, I guess. I personally believe, actually, I'm going to save that for the explanation video. But uh, clearly the, the pendant was keeping um, like Jessica alive or something. Um, and when the pendant was, was completely used up, it, Jessica's time is gone. Um, and she, she did it. She, she had a final, like, God, I hate to be in this world. And then she scraped the, the pendant on, the, uh, on April and revived her or made her feel better. It's like such a crazy story. Obviously, a lot of connections to To Be Beautiful here. It's literally... I, I'm not going to say it's the same premise because it's a completely different premise, but they both tend to metal. Uh, and so, and there are Eleanor connections, I have to say it, I have to say it. But this was such a good story, I could talk for hours about this story. Honestly, I'm not going to. Uh, again, I'm going to be making other videos on this story, so uh, stay tuned for that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I will see you in another audiobook. Goodbye.